Hello everybody, my name is Paul McKeever, and this is my new guitar build. All right, so we come to the point now where it's time to adjust the heights of the pickups because as the magnets on the pickups get closer to a string, they will pick up more signal or more current will be generated by the interaction of the strings movement through the magnetic field created by the magnets in the pickups. And so uh, the question is, uh, you know, what is the right height? So uh, I have already made a short video uh, in which my son holds onto the guitar, strums a little bit, plays a little bit, and I, at the same time, while he was wearing the guitar, I, uh, because we had to have it plugged in so I could hear the guitar, I thought it best that someone else play it. I then adjusted the pickup heights uh, with a screwdriver while he was playing. So it's a bit of a two-person job. I don't think it necessarily has to be done that way. It was kind of a fun thing to do with my son. Um, and uh, however, the, the difficulty uh, in terms of videotaping this or video recording this is that it, I don't think it shows up as well or turns out as well uh, on the video as it does in person. So in person, you can hear relatively well that this string is louder than that string. And you can, you know, by adjusting the pickup height, make the two strings have roughly the same level of, of uh, output uh, on a given pickup. Uh, but because that's not exactly easy to hear on the video, what I thought I would do instead is just show you first uh, how to adjust uh, the pickup heights when what you've done is direct, directly mounted the pickups to the to the uh, body of the guitar, which is what you will by now know I did. So let's just have a look at the guitar itself. All right, so if you watched the video I did on the part where we installed the uh, the pickups direct mounted into the, the body, uh, you'll know that what we've done is we've for each of these pickups, there was, the, you know, the two holes in the pickup itself that slides into this. This is a cap that slides over top of the pickup. And the pickup holes, or the mounting holes, uh, have been drilled out so that they don't um, catch on the screws. These are regular wood screws. And um, to adjust these pickups, because there's foam underneath the pickups that wants to push the pickup up, we just have to loosen a screw if we want to, uh, of course, I'm not the right drill bit, or sorry, the right uh, screwdriver bit, but I'll just show you. If you were to want to, for example, uh, raise this pickup on this side, you would just go to the screw right there and you would turn counterclockwise, which would make the screw head come up and the foam underneath the pickup would cause the pickup to come up cl closer to the uh, to the string. Likewise, if you wanted to say put the side down further, you would just screw clockwise. Okay, that, that screw right there. And that would cause this side of the pickup to lower relative to the string. And what you'll see in the video that follows this, uh, where my son's playing this guitar, is that the, uh, the uh, low E side of the pickups, uh, in one of the cases, and I can't remember exactly which one, was giving more signal to the output than was the the high E. So we backed off, we pushed the the uh, this side of the pickup down in further into the into the uh, the cavity, and we brought up this side of the pickup more closely to the E string until the two sounded just subjectively to one's ear to be giving out roughly the same amount of volume. Neither one of them speaking over top of the other. There was also a difference, I believe, and we'll see this in the video, it's been a while since I recorded it, uh, between the volume of this pickup and the volume of that pickup. And so uh, in one of the cases, I think it was this pickup, it was either, be, I don't know if it's hotter, but for whatever reason, it was louder than this pickup here. So this whole pickup, we put, again, turning clockwise on both screws, we moved the pickup further into the body away from the strings so that the volume between the two pickups is the same. So it's not the case that I've got one hot pickup and one not pickup. They're they're about equal in volume. Uh, and remember, there's a master volume for this. So it, I don't have to adjust the volume because I've switched 
to a different pickup, it's going to not affect the volume if I switch between the pickups. All right, so let's have a look at the video. Do your best. Perhaps if you've got some good speakers or headphones, uh, you'll be able to hear the difference in volume. And if not, I apologize in advance, but you get the idea. If this side is too loud relative to this side, turn it down. Uh, if um, this pickup is, say, quieter than that pickup, bring both poles down on this one. Uh, and if you can, bring both poles up on this one. All right, let's have a look at the video. Are you just, just recording? Yeah, I just want to see. notes I want to see how much quieter they are yeah so the pickups need to be moved from the uh, at the top these ones need to be lowered these ones are about as close to the string as they get already so okay so we've adjusted the heights of the pickups so that I think now the low strings are more or less balanced with the high strings in terms of volume. And also, this pickup was a bit quieter than this one, so we've actually, this was as close to the strings as we can get, so I've lowered this one so that I think the volume between the two is approximately the same. Do you want to just give it a shot? I'll switch between the two. Right, so that's the adjustment of the pickup heights. Um, the next thing we're going to be doing, I believe, is just to check to see whether the neck we received from Warmoth uh, has any inappropriate warp in it, or whether it's nice and flat. Um, the Nothing's been done to the neck. There's been no fret dressing or anything like that. Um, and I haven't adjusted any truss rod yet or anything like that. So uh, I've got a measure to find out whether the neck's good and straight and if not, I'll have to adjust the truss rod, uh, which in this uh, particular guitar is done by way of a um, uh, an Allen wrench on the side. So you don't have to actually take the neck off to adjust it. Um, you can you can do that from the side. It's a really nice feature. Uh, I think it's a Goto product that's used by Warmoth. I'm not sure if any other companies use that side adjustment for the uh, truss rod, but well, you know, anyway, have a look at that on their website. It's kind of neat. And Aaron has a video uh, he's the rep, you know representative of the company. He has a video on their YouTube channel where he explains the truss rod and the side adjustment of the truss rod. It's really fascinating. Um, because we're going to be getting into this much more technical side of things, the measurements become very important, not only of the straightness of the neck, but also, of course, if you want to adjust with some precision the height of each of the various pole pieces, you know, at the uh, on this end here, okay? If you, th these six independent bridge pieces um, to do that so that the curvature of those strings matches the curvature at the neck. All right, so the strings going over the bridge, if you want that curvature to be roughly the same as the strings going over, say, the 12th fret of the 22nd fret, well, then you need to be able to measure that curvature appropriately, and there are uh, ways of doing that. So there are, <clears throat> uh, it kind of like a set of, of pre-shaped, pre-curved um, devices that you hold up under the strings and you get to find out whether the strings are touching all the way. And if not, you can adjust the the uh, bridge pieces until everything's just fine. So <clears throat> bottom line is, I'm going to try to get that video ready for next Friday. There might be a delay though. There might not be a video next Friday. It all really depends on whether I get from uh, the United States where I've ordered from stubac.com uh, the measuring equipment uh, it depends on whether I get that before, significantly before next Friday. Uh, if not, uh, there'll probably be a one or maybe even two week uh, delay before the next installment. I apologize for that. Uh, but yay, I'm learning as I go and hopefully I'm able to, you know, share what I, I discover along with you and save you a bit of time, get you more prepared than I've been in, in um, having the right tools. All right, so until uh, the next video, whether that's next Friday or not, don't give up. Just come on back a week later. It'll always be at Friday at 2. And uh, we'll see you next time.